I think most people know that doing prep, whether it's for a show or just a cut in general, it's a difficult thing to pull off. And a lot of people pay a lot of attention to that phase. They kind of fixate on that, zero in on it, and make sure that they're doing everything that they possibly can to be successful in that. But what about the post-show phase? What happens after the show, after your cut has ended for non-competitors? There are a lot of misconceptions about this phase. I see it handled inappropriately a lot of times. So I wanted to talk today about what that phase looks like, what it should look like as I'm going through it myself here as well before we transition into a full off-season or growth phase. There's this transitionary period that I think needs a little bit more attention. So let's dive into it. This is episode 262 of The Drop Set. Let's hit it. All right, everybody, welcome to episode 262. That feels weird to say of the drop set. I'm your host, Darren Starr. Thank you for joining me. To everybody out there watching on YouTube, hi. If you're listening to the audio only stream, hey, to you guys out there as well, thank you. Uh, if you are on YouTube, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, et cetera. If you're listening elsewhere, um, please give a rating and a review if you can on whatever platform you were listening to. That'd be greatly appreciated. Anything you can to help the show grow my undying thanks to you. Um, you can check out anything that I do at fivestarphysique.com or fivestardigital.com where now I have um, the full course of Hypertrophy University available online. The first two modules of Macro Bootcamp are available with the additional modules to come online shortly. Um, and then Bikini Blueprint is underway as well with more to come. So something for, uh, for all people. So I wanted to dive in today on the post-show or post-cut rebound phase, deal with some misconceptions here. So as we get rolling here, um, you know, it means post-cut, but I'm going to just refer just because reflexively, I always say post-show. It's just my verbal tick that I have. It's what I call it. So just know that whether you're competing or not, this applies to you. If you are going into a phase where you're at a deficit designed to shed fat loss after that phase, that's what we're talking about here. Um, we're going to debunk a key myth about this phase, help you figure out where you sit as far as expectations are concerned, what kind of things we want to watch out for, what kind of things we want to correct and develop some best practices going forward as well. So the first key point that everybody needs to think about in this is how hard was your prep? Prep, cut, again, interchangeable. I'll use competitive language here just to keep it simple. It isn't about how lean you got, but how difficult your prep was. So as it, as it says here on the slide, you know, you, you can maybe not be the leanest that you possibly could have been, but it could still be an incredibly challenging prep for a lot of reasons. Some people, they just, you know, their metabolism requires that they dig really, really super deep and that gets them to 12% body fat, whereas it could get somebody else to 3% body fat. Everybody's different. So how hard do you have to work for how long? Not necessarily how lean did you get? Certainly there can be correlation between those two, but not always, not always. Um, the harder you prep, the harder you cut, the more dysfunction you're going to develop and experience over time. So it's important to get a list of like, what are the kind of things that we're thinking about here? So here is my list. Um, what are we concerned with? So first of all, let's just divide this into two categories. There's immediately post-show, and then there's a little bit more after post-show. So immediately it's hydration electrolytes. So like once you, this is specifically for competitors now, once you walk off stage, you want to get you rehydrated um, and get electrolytes replenished as well. This is going to be more of a general piece of advice for people who are not my clients because I'm not looking to actively dehydrate anybody. We're not using, you know, if you work with me, we're not using diuretics or anything like that. And it's not because I'm like, you know, morally or ethically opposed to the use of diuretics. But as I've said here before many times in the show, uh, they just will almost always make you look worse. Why would we use them? You need water in your body in order to be able to get a pump. There are some rare circumstances where we might want to pull a little bit of water, um, but they're very rare. And if you think that you're one of those, you're probably not. So almost everybody will look better with a reasonable amount of water still in their system just because otherwise you're going to be flat. It's not like you can pull water from a subcutaneous layer and not pull it out of the muscle. That's not how 
any diuretic works. That's not how any water manipulation works. So this is general strategy for people who have a coach or are following guidance into a show that is going to have them depleted of water and super, super dehydrated on stage, which again, should not be what you're after. And if your coach wants you to do that, really question them and grill them on it. Why are we doing that? And if they say, well, because we want you dry, just run away because it means they don't know what they're talking about. It means they don't know what they're talking about because that's just not something that you can do. Um, so outside of that, the immediate post-show concern, what, what else do we have that's more of a big picture concern? Well, you're going to have a slower metabolism after the show. You know, the nature of being in a deficit causes your metabolism to slow down. So your base metabolic rate is lower. You're burn, burning fewer calories at rest. You're burning fewer calories with exercise, which is typically why you need to increase your deficit. You need to do more cardio as prep goes on and on. Um, your sleep can be very dysfunctional. How much of it you get, the quality of it as well can be highly dysfunctional too. Um, I experienced this myself for the last, it really started at five weeks out with my first bit of travel there, um, sleeping in a hotel for a week, just really, really lousy sleep. And uh, after that, it just, it never bounced back. Um, and it's only started to become a little bit more normal after the show. Um, so your GI can suffer. So this can just be some general low grade, bloating, uh, constipation, acid reflux, heartburn, that kind of thing. Lots of potential GI dysfunction. Um, again, very common. I'm starting to think that I can't complete a prep without having some level of pretty significant GI dysfunction that impacts how I feel when I'm up on stage in a very, very pronounced and negative way um, to the point where I could see it in the photos from this last show that I did. Um, overtraining and going along with that, your lack of recovery. You know, you're, a lot of people just have this inability to give themselves days off as they go into um, their show or the tail end of their cut um, just because they're like, I got to go. I got to push, 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 push. I'm like, yeah, on certain things, but take a day off from training. So most people don't do that. So you're going to be overtrained and under recovered going along with all this, just a general excess of fatigue. Just you're going to be tired as shit and you know it, you know, you're tired. It takes time to get over that. It's not like you can just be like, take a day off, get a good night's sleep. Like, Oh, I feel better. Like if that's the case, you didn't prep very hard. <laughs> Like we're talking about when there's significant dysfunction in these, which if you prep hard, you're going to have some significant dysfunction in these, including hormonal shifts or imbalances. I can't tell you how many times somebody says like, well, so I did prep with so-and-so and they just wrecked my hormones. I'm like, let's be clear. You were a willing part participant in that as well. Um, some level of hormone dysfunction is, is kind of accepted and expected when you're getting really lean especially if you're going from a state where you're not really lean. If you're walking around fairly lean all the time and you get a little bit leaner and that's competition stage lean for you, yeah, probably not. You know, that's not a hard prep. You know, you've got a, a metabolism that supports that. You know, you're genetically just more inclined to have an easier time to get leaner. Um, but for women, like having your estrogen and progesterone, um, losing your cycle, having those hormones um, really kind of out of whack, not uncommon. Not uncommon. It, it, it happens a lot. And so it's not that your coach wrecked your hormones. It's that um, having some hormonal dysfunction was really a necessary part of getting you stage lean. And keep in mind, people come to me and sometimes they'll be like, I want to get stage lean, but I want to keep, you know, all of my hormones intact. I want to maintain cycle function, et cetera. It's like, okay, well, this is going to be a much harder process and it's going to take a lot longer. So just be ready for that. So if you've got a lot of weight to lose and you want to do a 12 week prep, that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Realistically, it's about setting yourself up on the front end to have more time. Typically what is most common is people are like, this is the show I'm doing. It's in 14 weeks. I need to be stage lean. Okay, cool. And I think a good coach would say, you know, there's a good chance you're going to have some hormonal dysfunction here. So are you okay with that? And typically at that point, the answer is yes. It's only afterwards, once you experience it, that you might change your answer and say no. Uh, so just keep that in mind. And uh, also like for men, you know, your testosterone certainly, um, especially for natural competitors, um, can tank over the course of a prep as well. Uh, we're going to be dealing with food fixation, just that 
that idea where it's like, even if you're not really hungry, like you still just want food all the time. You can't stop thinking about it. You just want to keep eating all the time uncontrollably. That's hard. And then also just mood style things, you know, depression, you know, that post-show blues phase, just being irritable. Um, I had a client this morning who uh, checked in with me and he was about six weeks out and he's like, I'm just so annoyed by everything. I'm like, yeah, that, that sounds like prep, dude. Absolutely. It's like, you know, I just drop something on the ground and it feels like it's the end of the world. Like, been there. Yep. So those are all things that take some time to come back from after the show. So um, what does it mean? You know, the, the idea here, the, the myth that I wanted to dispel is that after a show, your body's in a pretty shitty state. Like, you know, even if you don't do the ridiculous peak week, water, sodium manipulation, et cetera, which can put you in a dangerous position, which is why we want to rehydrate you, get electrolytes back in your system once you're off stage. Um, and for people who will do those crazy protocols and then go out and, you know, have their celebratory meal and they pound down a bunch of alcohol, like you're, you're creating a recipe that's going to land you in the hospital doing that. So we want to avoid all that. Um, but even devoid of that, just the big picture things that happen during a cut, your body's in a pretty bad spot. And one of the points that I drive home in my hypertrophy university course is that building muscle is hard and your body just would really rather not have to do it. So if there's some kind of a loophole that it can find to get out of the hard job of having to build muscle, it's going to find that loophole and it's going to take it. Um, and so if several of your body systems are compromised, you know, your digestion isn't great, your recovery is terrible, you know, your gym performance isn't good, like you're not going to build muscle. So this idea like the post-show rebound, it's an absolute myth. Um, if you have a good post-show rebound, it's because you didn't have a hard prep, period. If you did, if you had a truly hard and challenging prep, then you need time off after your show. You know, it's not when you're going to grow. Are you kidding me? Hell no. Your body wants to do anything but it wants to sleep and you're going to place additional demands on it. Like, no, no, we can't recover. We need to go right into muscle building mode. Your body's going to be like, fuck you, buddy. It ain't happening. We're not doing that. We're not playing that game. Get out of here with your bullshit. So, uh, just dispel that idea right now of, you know, you've got this anabolic window after a show, your body's super depleted. It's really ready to grow. No, it's not. It's ready to do anything, but it's ready to go into a coma for a few months is what it's going to do. It's what it's more likely to do than anything else. Um, so it, it, everything is probably dysfunctional on some level, maybe not enough that it's really causing a problem, but still like needs a little bit of time to bounce back and return to normal. Um, so it, optimal growth, as it says, requires optimal body system conditions and you just aren't there after a show. So what do we need? Well, we need normalcy, like getting things back to a, a state where you're not in prep, you're not in a deficit, you're not doing a ton of cardio, you're allowing for more, um, uh, fatigue drop off, more recovery. And you just need time, like separation between show day and where you're at now on the calendar. Just more time. For me, I am right now, say, 16 days. Oh, math. 18 days-ish, post-show for me. Um, how normal do I feel at this point? Well, let's get to that. Let's keep that in mind as we as we go through some of these other questions here. So, right, what do we want? With action items here. What do we do? So, right off stage, pre-judging, water and electrolytes. Eat as you need to, rest, and then plan on fueling back up for finals. That's easy. After finals, what do we do? Fluids, electrolytes. Again, celebrate. Go eat something. Absolutely, no alcohol. Like, especially if you've done any crazy peak week manipulations. If you haven't, you're probably fine. I don't want to overblow it and make it seem like you're going to die if you have a beer or something like that. But just know that you're, in all cases, you're probably better off saving that for, for at least a day later if you're, going to, if you're going to implement any kind of alcohol. So the week post show. So depending on how hard you cut, to say this again, you may be really, really dysfunctional. So what I would recommend that you do is assess your current state in a vacuum, like kind of pull yourself out of the moment and just think like, okay, big picture, you know, describe how you feel out loud and you want to cover things like, how am I sleeping? How well rested am I? So what I would tell you right now, and again, so, and you can kind of do this um, a few times in this post-show phase. Um, how would I describe this right now? Let's do a, a thought exercise here. So 
I would say right now, I'm sleeping really well. I'm clearly still tired because I'm having a tough time getting up when my alarm goes off. I, I do it 50% of the time. I'm also like, you know, I'm 16 days, 18 days, whatever, God, post-show. Um, I've only been home from my post-show travels. Today marks day seven, I think. So, like, I'm really only like a week back into the routine. So I have kind of a small sample size. Um, it's tough for me to wake up. Um, you know, one day this weekend I slept until seven, which for me is like a once a year kind of thing to sleep in that late. Uh, it just never happens. Um, but I just I didn't set an alarm, didn't wake up till seven. Usually my usual wake up time is 4.30. On weekends I will usually sleep in until 5.15 or so. That's just when my body kind of wakes myself up anyway, if not at 4.30 as normal. Um, but one day it was like seven. <laughs> so Oops. Okay. Um, I still want afternoon naps. Um, as I'm recording this right here, if I wasn't trying to like put on a little bit of energy for the camera, I mean, you can probably tell if you watch or listen to this a lot, like, man, Darren sounds kind of tired. I am really tired. Like I really want to take a nap, but on my calendar, two o'clock rolled around, it was time to record this. So here I am. <laughs> So you gotta gotta follow the calendar. Have to obey the schedule. Um, it, but like, yeah, I want a nap. Um, like nine fifteen rolls around, I'm turning into a pumpkin. I'm ready for bed. I hit the bed psh, out. So I'm really tired. I am sleeping a lot better though. Like whatever sleep dysfunction I had has largely gone away. I think that was mostly stress related um, due to prep itself, due to the situation with my mom also. So um, a lot of that stuff, you know, just the lack of uncertainty now with prep being over, that sleep dysfunction dissipated pretty quickly. I was able to get back, like even when I was still in Oregon, I was sleeping pretty well there with some sleep aids. I've pulled those out now, so I'm not taking anything to help sleep. And I'm, you know, wake up, you know, once to pee, something like that. Eh. And that's about it. Um, I would say my desire to get back into the gym is very low right now. I went back today. I didn't do much. Um, I've, I've gone a couple of days here and there just to kind of like go through a warm up, get a little bit of blood flow, not really like start on my post show growth phase plan. It was kind of my intention to do that today. As I got going, it's like, yeah, Still just not there. So I'm going to take tomorrow off. I'm going to give it another attempt on Friday and go in with something formally written. But also, like, I haven't been jazzed up to formally write that plan up to see what it looks like. So um, that, that just speaks to, like, still being a little overtrained. Um, my cardio is down. Um, I'm still doing a daily walk with the dogs for 30 minutes. Um, haven't really been to the gym to do any post-workout cardio. The intention is not really to continue with that. Um, and so, you know, I would say those walks, they're fine, but man, I do kind of wear out on those pretty fast still. So it, it's still like the, the fatigue monster is still there. How's my appetite? My appetite's fine. Um, my food fixation is through the roof. However, it's like, I, I'm giving myself some little indiscretions here and there. And it turns into like, oh, okay, well I had five things off plan today. Like it can, it can snowball and go into that real fast. Um, and that's one of those things that really I'm, I'm kind of disappointed by just because I felt like as I was going through prep, I was doing a good job of avoiding that. Um, and then it's just with the situation of how everything played out at the end, like that all went out the window and, you know, all that normalcy and, and goodwill and predictability that I'd built up throughout a successful prep had kind of just gone away completely. So now it's like, eh, whatever. Um, so I don't feel great about that, but I do feel like very food fixated. So what I'm trying to do now is really just keep myself to eating meals and stop like just shoving food in my face in between meal times just because I can. That's the thing. It's like, oh, I have the freedom to do this now. I can do it. It's not a good place to be. So that is something that's going to come from just more time, more distance between today and show day. So that's how I feel right now. So, um, so assess that in a vacuum, say that stuff out loud. And then you can really kind of get an idea. Like I'm saying like right now, like I'm planning to go back to the gym on Friday. Maybe I should just put it off till Monday, to be honest with you. Like I, w I would like to, to go back to the gym when I'm excited to, not when I feel like I have to, um, because that just speaks to the idea. Like, yeah, I need a little bit more recovery time. So having said that out loud, I think that might be the plan now. Um, now, you might be fine and good to go. Like, I've had plenty of clients I work with who will do a show on Saturday. They're back on the gym on Sunday. And I tell them, like, don't do that. Like, that's just, it's frankly, I mean, I hate to use the word, but it's kind of dumb. Like, take a day off. You may think, like, I don't need to. I'm like, yeah, you probably do, realistically. Keep in mind that when you're 
in that state post-show, you've forgotten what it feels like to really feel good and be fully recovered. So take a few days off just to remind yourself like, oh, this is what proper rest feels like. Like you get so accustomed to just, you know, running at, you know, half speed that that starts to feel normal. And like I went today and, uh, you know, was going through the motions a little bit and I was like, eh, it's not really there. But just by virtue of having taken the time off that I have, like I did a few exercises on some kind of a kneeling row, like a cable row, something like that. Without even really doing much, I'm like, whoa, things are responding. Like there's a pretty good pump going on here. And all I did was three sets and it wasn't even going particularly heavy. Like that time off buys you that kind of a response again. So take the time, take the time. You know, whether you think you need it or not, take a couple of days off. Your, your body will thank you. Again, whether you think it, whether you think you need it or not, that kind of physical rest is just absolutely invaluable. You just can't put a price on it. Um, I want you to always think long-term as well. So as I like to say, our physiques are a product of what we do long-term, not what we do today. Like, yes, every day matters, but your big picture plan matters way more. So if you zoom out over the course of your bodybuilding career, if you take one or two weeks off after a show, after a cut, what are you really losing? Nothing. You think you're going to lose a bunch of muscle in two weeks? No. Give me a break. Atrophy is a slow process. What do you lose? Nothing. What do you gain? Recovery. Intensity. Motivation, to some extent. Desire to train. Even if it's there um, post-show, it will be higher if you give yourself a week off. Um, for uh, committed lifters, I keep thinking of like the best way, like there's a t-shirt slogan in here somewhere for committed lifter lifters days off are a good thing. They're not a sign of weakness. A lot of people say like, I just struggle to take days off. I'm like, yeah, well that is your struggle and fight it and win that fight. Take the days off because if you don't, um, your long-term progress will just grind to a halt. Like you need that rest time. You need that recovery time, especially, especially after completing a difficult prep. You need that time off for sure. And also, we know now the post-show rebound is a myth. So we can say that you're not gaining anything by rushing back into the gym. There's just no benefit from it at all. Um, it just kind of keeps you grinding at that same level where everything's like a 6.5 or a 7 out of 10. And you forget what a 10 out of 10 day really feels like. You take that time off, it allows that scale to kind of recalibrate itself. A little bit so that you get a more honest and true to life interpretation of what it's supposed to feel like Whew. all right quick break here i just wanted to remind everybody check out fivestarphysique.com you can read about everything that i do there as far as coaching have workout programs available some merch etc all kinds of cool stuff you can also check out fivestardigital.com where i have all of my online courses available right now I'm working on bikini blueprint hypertrophy university macro boot camp men's physique blueprint all kinds of stuff going on there those courses are going to start to become available june 1st of this year i'm working my tail off getting those things ready for prime time you can actually go there right now pre-order those courses if you want or hit me up through five star physique with any questions that you have on any of those courses I'd be more than happy to help you so instead what can we do with this time we'll rest you know um i would still recommend like maintain your steps and stay active like don't necessarily maintain your same cardio schedule but don't give yourself a license to just be completely lazy like training in the gym is the thing that really drives fatigue. We want to take a rest from that. We can still get in eight to 10,000 steps a day, whatever you're accustomed to. You know, if you were pushing 15, 17,000 steps during prep, you can dial that back. So um, still, you want to be reasonably active um, and not just devoid of any activity, um, but it doesn't need to be like prep levels. Um, take that time to rework your meal plan. Make sure that your meal plan is something that you're excited about as you go into the next phase. Um, I did that actually before my show. Um, but then I wasn't able to implement it after my show due to travel, which kind of sucked. Um, update your training program or search for a new one online. Um, hire a coach if you need to. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> catch up on work. Um, catch up family time. Spend more time with your dogs. Play with them outside. Whatever, you know, that kind of stuff. Sleep in. These are all things that you can do. Um, a lot of people are like, I just feel antsy if I don't go to the gym. Do this shit instead. 
Like you need to, you can't rely on the gym and become addicted to it. Like it's a drug um, just because you can turn it into something unhealthy. It is not something that you need. We want to think of it as a means to an end. And at that point also, like we can enjoy it. Absolutely. But we need to enjoy the lack of it as well. And I think that makes us just more rounded individuals in general anyway. Um, let yourself have a win. Like you just completed something big. You just finished a cut, prep for a show. You accomplished something, right? Give your body and your brain a chance to enjoy that. That's something that I did not have an opportunity to do here just because of the immediate travel that I had to do and just the stress of that whole situation after my show. Um, but and, and the thing is, like, I can... I can feel the lack of that. Like I didn't really get closure from the end of the show. I didn't really get a chance to think about it and feel it and just kind of like, oh yeah, that happened. Cool. I just sit and, you know, reflect on it. And you know, that didn't, wasn't allowed to happen for me. Um, so you want to mentally unwind, de-stress, decompress, think about your next goal and how do the next handful of weeks and the first couple of months post show play into that goal. And that goal is something that hopefully you'd been thinking about prior to the completion of this last phase, this last cut, this last show. Um, I already knew my, what mine was. I had a couple of possibilities here. So um, the, the plan was, and let's rewind to when I was six weeks out, thinking if I qualify for junior nationals, go ahead and do that. Um, it would have been not quite two weeks um, after that show, back in the same city, so still relatively close to home, easy to do it. I'd go and get my ass kicked. That's fine. At least I know where I stand on a national level. Um, like, that would be a, a good, valuable experience. Um, or, if I didn't qualify, the plan was, tentatively, go into a growth phase, targeting my next show in 2027. <laughs> which I realize it's 2024 right now. Um, I'm not that guy that I need to do two shows a year, like one every, every handful of years. Like I get plenty of competitive experience just living vicariously through my clients. Show day is not something that I particularly enjoy. If I'm going to do it, I want it to be a big deal. And as I get older, the big deal of prep becomes more and more tiring. And so I want to give myself a little bit of a break. I thought 2027 specifically, because when I do that, I'll be eligible for Masters 50 plus. So um, that doesn't mean that that's what's going to happen, but definitely like extended growth phase with whatever at the end of that rainbow as an option. So how do my next few weeks or a couple of months play into that? Well, I'm going to have a long growth phase ahead of me. I want to make sure that I'm really well rested and we're really well planned for it. And ideally like, minimize the bad weight gain in such a way that I feel like I can sustain myself in a growth phase for a long time without having to go into a mini cut. So that last part, I feel like I've failed on um, just because my weight is definitely up. I have not checked the scale since the show. Um, and I, I'm not in a hurry to, it's, it's going to be a bloodbath. <laughs> it's not going to be pretty. Um, but whatever it is, like I'm not hiding. Well, I guess I am kind of hiding from it. I also know that when I step on that scale, like it doesn't change how I feel. Like, I, I, how do I feel? Well, not great. You know, I feel okay-ish. You know, do I feel excited to get back to the gym, however? No. And I want that excitement to be there. So there's a three-pronged approach to kind of curing some of this dysfunction. Um, so first of all, moderate weight gain. Again, um, I, I have done that except for the moderate part. I've just gained a bunch of weight. I'm probably up 20 pounds from um, day before the show-ish. Um, maybe a little bit more. Um, so talking morning weight there. So that would not be moderate. Um, I've worked with plenty of clients who are up three pounds post show. Uh, and these are like guys, men's physique competitors, um, competing at like 155. And then like two weeks after the show, they're 158. And they're like, God, I just feel so fat. I just want to be like, shut up. Like you're up three pounds. Give me a break as a percentage of your body weight, like that's nothing. Like you need to gain more of the weight than that back just to really feel normal again. So you're fine. You're fine. The next one is going to be stress reduction. So the stress of prep falls away. What else is on your mind? What else is weighing on your mind? Cause that's going to be weighing on your body as well. So this is a chance where again, take time off from the gym, catch up on some things that have been, been neglected that might be causing stress and put yourself in a position where again, building muscle is hard. What we want to do is be removing these roadblocks, these impediments to growth. So, um, 
gaining weight can help your GI return back to normal, can help your sleep return back to normal, helps your hormones return back to normal. Stress reduction is uh, going to also aid in fatigue decrease. It's going to help those previous markers and improve other blood markers as well. And fatigue reduction is actually the third one. So this is just like the actual rest. So we need to gain some weight. We need to remove stressors, solve things, catch up on stuff, and then just get more rest, get better sleep, take time off from the gym, drop your overall workload, pull back on cardio, all that good stuff. Now, keep in mind, You've been going really hard throughout this whole cut, throughout your entire prep. Continuing at that same pace, uh, it's, it, I equate it to like if you if you don't ever let yourself be in a bad mood, then suddenly like you're you're you never have a bad day, and suddenly your good days are all just kind of gray and nothing's actually good. So like time out of the gym. Uh, means it's going to be better once you're back in um, and start back in as I will be with reduced volume, reduced frequency. Like instead of going five days to start, I might just go back in four days initially. Um, just again, more recovery time. If I give myself from here another two weeks off, I'll probably be chomping at the bit to go back. And like at that point, five days with moderate volume is probably pretty good. But if I go back on Friday or maybe, you know, give myself a couple of extra days and go back on Monday, um, I'm going to want to to maybe do four days a week for and just kind of still build up some of that capital, that goodwill in terms of recovery and let your body kind of get back to it. So, um, but you've got to experience some of the ebb and flow as well. The whole like no bad days thing. It's kind of like doing no bad weeks or no bad months on prep. It's like you can chill out, chill out and let yourself take the foot off the gas pedal for a little bit. You need to, you can't just redline your body 365 days a year. Um, labs, blood work is a great thing to get updated as well. And about four to six weeks post show is when I'd recommend that. Um, what panels we want to run here are going to depend on a lot of things though. So a full hormone panel is always useful. So, um, for men and women, total testosterone, um, guys, I would also get luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone for women, throw in your estrogen, progesterone guys, estrogen as well. Also like, um, for enhanced lifters. Um, so guys, if you're on TRT, anything else that could cause an estrogen rebound, anything aromatizing, you want to check your estrogen as well. Um, just keep in mind that you should be cycling down or off completely post-show. Um, so we want to try and reverse some of this dysfunction and a lot of cycle-related compounds are going to add to that dysfunction or be generating it out of whole cloth themselves. So you also want to check your lipids, metabolic panel. Um, CRP is C-reactive protein. That's just a good sign for general inflammation in the body overall. Your complete blood count, looking at hemoglobin, hematocrit there, thyroid, um, and possibly some other things depending on the nature of what you are running specifically. Um, so four to six weeks will give you at least some idea of how things are correcting back to normal. Now, if you want to run things like <laughs> during peak week or something, just to kind of see how bad they are, you could certainly do that because they'll never be as bad as they are then, more than likely. Um, and then four to six weeks later, you can see how much recovery there's been and then maybe plan on another four to six weeks down the road. And then once things look good, every 12 to 20 weeks after that. Um, and again, for enhanced lifters, come off everything or go back just to TRT or HRT as needed. The cliche about, you know, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Yeah, 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 blah, 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 but it's true. <laughs> it's very true. So again, zoom out, think big picture. It's not about what you're doing today, but it's what you're doing over the course of a 365-day long year. How consistent are you over 365 days? I don't care about missing a day, taking a week off post-show, especially since there's a whole bunch of good reasons why you might want to do that. Um, you, again, it's time that you probably need. And then finally here, food fixation, lack of control on this front, et cetera. Um, again, weight gain and more time post-show. So just sometimes, you know, people, they kind of fall into two camps. Um, it seems weird to me because I'm clearly in one of those camps. And so it's hard for me to imagine the other one, but I see a lot of my clients who do it successfully. Um, I'm in the camp of, well, my way to normalize food and deal with food fixation post-show is just to eat enough to the point where I feel gross and then food is no longer special. And a lot of other people are like, well, I'll just avoid it. And then that noise kind of shuts down eventually. Like that sounds lovely. Um, it's not a skill that I've ever been able to pull off. I thought this was going to be my time. 
it was not. And I do blame outside factors on that. I think if everything went according to the plan that I had set up, uh, I'd be in much better shape on that front. Alas, it's not. So um, as it says, it, you know, that problem can range from non-existent um, for some people to crippling for other people. I would say for me, it's not crippling, but it's definitely like problematic. <laughs> definitely problematic. Um, the goal is to keep your weight gain moderate and not set yourself up for a challenging off season. When your weight gain becomes unmoderated, <laughs> more aggressive, more out of control, um, that's when you're shooting yourself in the foot um, and setting yourself up for a really hard off season. Um, because now it's like, eh, you're going to need a mini cut before too long, probably. And we don't really want to do that. We still need to get your body back into a state where it's a little bit more optimal. We've got to bide our time a little bit. So we want to avoid the situation where somebody has a good successful prep and then they rebound really, really hard coming out of that, gain a whole bunch of weight and then are immediately in that position where it's like, I'm uncomfortable in my body. I need to, I need to get back on a cut. Like you can't do that. You, at that point, what you've done is like, yeah, well, you put yourself in a situation now where you just kind of have to be uncomfortable for a little bit. Roll with it and get used to it. Um, going back into a, a cut, even if it's a mini cut after you've completed a full prep, like that's the last thing in the world that you want to do. So post-show rebound. There we go. Um, there are solutions to all of these problems. That's, that's the thing to keep in mind. And the answer and what those solutions look like will vary from person to person, of course. Um, just like the way things are felt is going to vary from person to person. The biggest important, most important factor is how hard did you prep? Um, and again, not how lean you got, but how hard did you prep? How difficult was it for you? And don't let other people be like, oh, your calories were high. You, were, you had it good. You were fine. It's like, you know, just ask yourself. How to, if you don't compare yourself to other people, how hard was that prep? And I think also like if it's your first one, you'll say like, God, that was the hardest thing I've ever done. And then the next time you might think that's the hardest thing you've ever done. And actually that first one wasn't that bad. Like you get tougher over time. So you just have to answer the question in a vacuum, however. So that's all I've got for 262. Um, I thank you all for joining me. I'm a little tired still. Um, so <laughs> apologies for that. Uh, Certainly uh, hit me up um, on Instagram uh, at the drop set podcast. You can hit me up personally at Darren underscore star. Check out the drop to see the whole video archive there. YouTube viewers. Thank you for watching. Appreciate it. Give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications. If you'd be, a, be so kind um, and uh, share the video um, with uh, far and wide. Um, tell your friends, please. Uh, I'm really making an effort to try and grow this podcast and it's impossible to do so without word of mouth. So the same thing for audio listeners. Um, I'm looking at the statistics every week and every week it comes back. It's about the same number of listeners. So something's not happening on the growth side here. And honestly, it's been in the same number of listeners for about the past 150 episodes. So I'm really looking to make a change here. Um, so uh, your help as always invaluable. So if there are specific topics you'd like me to cover, hit me up with those. You can always call in um, at the number 865-518-6569, leave a voicemail or shoot me a uh, audio message or a video message at the drop set podcast on Instagram. Um, and I can use that here as some fodder for stuff to go off of. So thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. And I will catch you all next week.